Yash, welcome to Lombardi's Legends podcast, man. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So, listen, we, we always ask our guests, first question, it's always the same, but, man, how does it feel to be a Green Bay Packer? Uh, it's an amazing feeling. Um, you know, my after my rookie season, I, I didn't, you know, exactly think I would be up here in Green Bay, but um, – it's really cold, and um, the football is awesome, man. I love it. I love it. Great. Where, so, where'd you think you were going to be? Uh, where you, you said you say you, you weren't sure you'd be here? You know, honestly, um, you know, I'm a kid from New Jersey, uh, so I, I think I was thinking I was going to land some some team in New York City, but or anywhere else. But um, you know, God had a different plan. <laughs> yeah. So, Yash, tell us a little bit about that journey then to the NFL. Um, you know, growing up in New Jersey um, and then uh, college ball at Virginia Tech. But um, can maybe just tell us a little bit, was football always your thing or kind of how did you, um, you know, get connected to the game? And, and then when did you know that NFL career was a reality for you? Um, so, you know, I'm born and raised pretty much in Orange, New Jersey. Um, I didn't move to Maplewood around, I think, 13 years old, 14 years old. I mean, by that time, I was a big basketball basketball kid. Um, I didn't start playing football until 2007, uh, Pop Warner. Uh, funny story. Um, well, I tried out for the Pop Warner team, and the, our coach told me to run a route, and I dropped the ball. <laughs> and he told me to stand over there with the fat kids, and I was thinking, like, what does that mean? Like, from that day on, I've been an offensive lineman, defensive lineman. <laughs> I've never played any um, – I never played any position outside of that. Uh, but besides that, um, played four years at Columbia High School in Maple, New Jersey. Uh, I would say probably like my sophomore year, I was thinking, okay, well, I had a coach named Kevin Green, and he talked to me about, like, you know, pursuing my career playing in college. And, um, you know, it was till then I thought, okay, I really have a shot at this. So uh, junior, senior year, I really, you know, try to do the best I can with that. And Senior year, I got accepted to uh, the New Jersey's uh, North and South All-Star Game, which was like the f first time uh, Columbia High School had a kid go there in years. So it was pretty much, it was cool. It was really cool to do that. Met um, Phil Sims. I played for the Giants like way, way, way back then. Um, it was a cool experience. And then went to Fork Union Military Academy um, 2014 because my SAT scores were low trying to get accepted in college. But at that time, I didn't know what school I wanted to go to yet. Um, and then I, I took an official visit to Virginia Tech during the time I was at Fork Union Military Academy and pretty much fell in love with the school. Um, so after that semester of uh, post-grad from high school, I enrolled in Virginia Tech uh, the spring of 2015, or the, the um, yeah, I believe the spring semester of 2015, and then played four years at Virginia Tech. And then from there, uh, came to the Packers, uh, 2000, the beginning of 2019 season. So you said you were a basketball guy up and do before football. Hey, you're listed at six foot seven. Have you been six foot seven for this long? Like how long's it been? Uh, well, it's been since like I think 16, 16 years old. 16. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were one of those guys that are like 12 are like just like towering over everybody, you know? I believe so. I mean, I've always been a taller guy, but you know, I just got outstanding by like high, high school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, what made you fall in love with uh, with Virginia Tech? You said you, you fell in love with, you like so, the campus, the, the people? Campus what was beautiful, it? people were awesome. Um, my high school, we didn't, win, we didn't win too many games, you know, and Virginia Tech had a tradition of going to a bowl game every year. So I wanted to be a part of that. <laughs> That was like my takeaway. For sure. And that's an awesome environment down there in Blacksburg. I'm sure never been there. Love to check that out. Yeah. Um, so, Yash, you played, speaking of Virginia Tech, both left tackle and right tackle in college. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You're listed as a tackle here on the Packers roster. Now, coming into year three, um, mm -hmm. what, what do you think you're settling in? Are you trying? What are the coaching staff uh, looking for from you? What have they told you? Uh, you know, are you trying to settle into one side and really, you know, make your bones and, and, and make a push here um, to compete for a spot not only on the roster, but, um, you know, eventually getting some, some opportunities to perhaps uh, earn a starting position? What's your, what's your plan here heading into year three? 
Um, year three, I definitely want to make a lot of jumps in year two. Um, my obligation pretty much is to be available for the team, both left and right. You know, honestly, like I do have personal goals, but you know, more so for the team. Everything is pretty much for the team. Anything the team needs from me, that they know that they can count on me and my teammates and coaching staff and the organization. Going into year three, I want to make uh, larger jumps with that, knowing the game, getting stronger, being more acquainted with the playbook, the whole nine. So, are you more comfortable right or left tackle? Um, I mean, this is a really interesting off season for the Packers, right? Yeah. Um, David Bakhtiari goes down, obviously, with a late season injury. Ricky Wagner hasn't been re-signed. There seems to be a lot of um, opportunity uh, at the tackle position, especially at the start of the season. Uh, so are you more comfortable at one? Is that something that you're working at? I'm just kind of curious because you seem like you're, you've got what the Packers like, which is uh, athleticism and flexibility. Um, I played left three years in uh, college and right my last year, but um, as of now, I've been – working on both. So I would say, you know, I'm, I would consider the left side, um, but honestly playing both is, right, is that what I need to do? Then that's what I need to do. If right tackle is what I need to play, that's what I'll play. If left tackle is what I need to play, that's what I'll play. Um, I think availability and flexibility is probably the, the biggest takeaway, so. And are you expecting to have a normal off season, not only just you, but the rest of the uh, players on the team? I mean. Things are still kind of locked down a little bit, I realize. But what's the word been in terms of what the offseason program uh, is expected to look like? Or hasn't there really been much communication on what that's well, going to be? From, from what I know now is that the NFL, or at least the every third, all the 32 teams will be starting April 19th. Um, as far as that, um, I don't really have any inside information, along with uh, will it be the same as last year or would be in person or virtual. So, um, yeah, I'm just waiting as much as you guys are waiting. So d during, um, you know, during this downtime or, or when you're away, you know, you're not in, you know, OTAs or camp or what have you, what do you do? Or uh, what's your, like, what are you eating? You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure football is 24-7 now, it seems like, as far as just nutrition and workouts. Um, what are you doing right now to, um, you know, just keep working towards your craft going into the season? Um, I was actually in Dallas, Texas uh, this past month uh, working with Duke Manyweather um, with offensive minds, uh, offensive masterminds. And I was down there training um, and it was a really good experience. Uh, I mean, I'm still, yeah, we're all, all, a lot of the guys are still like, you know, eating the right things, working out, getting ready for this upcoming season. And I'm pretty much doing the same. Uh, watching my diet with uh, food you shouldn't be eating, um, fried foods, trying to stay away from that, uh, trying to drink some more water, just, you know, staying staying on top of things, being a professional, you know, so. Yeah, so, and speaking of downtime, Yash, tell us a little bit more about, you know, who Yash the guy is and not just Yash the NFL football player. We understand you're into music and movies, but tell us a little bit more about you know, what your family and friends would say about you? I guess, you know, my family would say I'm a hardworking kid, um, responsible, respectful, um, very funny, uh, silly guy. Um, but, you know, to get into hobbies, I, I love making music off my uh, my MacBook Pro here. Um, I have a, a software called FL Studio. And I just pretty much just make beats or any kind of like music on there. Um, I, that's what I consider what I would do on my downtime, um, along with taking some photography with that I got into this year. So, what so what what kind of music? What kind of music are you making? I mean, I I, I believe. Sorry, sorry to creep on you ahead of time. We do our homework here at Lombardi's Legends. We we know that you uh, you got some pipes. You can sing a little bit too. You you did that in high school, I believe, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, what's, uh, what, what kind of music are you into? Is your music evolving over time? You know, are you doubling down on what you've been into? Just kind of curious. Honestly, you know, um, right now, as far as music, um, I, I, it all started like freshman year in college. Um, but before that, I sung in high school uh, four years. Uh, I was part of a selective choir my senior year, won some awards during some choir concerts and 
whatnot. But since then, I've just been plugged into making hip hop beats on the FL studio. And but honestly, I, I love all kind of genres of music, which is really cool because yeah, I can go to like a club or bar and they can just play anything, and I'll I'll find it. You know, a good listen. You know, country music, the whole nine. Um, but yeah, uh, I, my music is I would say is a little bit is, is evolutionizing slightly. I'm trying to get into different genres now. Um, house is probably one of them in the uh, EDM. So yeah, are you, so, do you, so is this like a like long day at the office, right? I mean, for you, it's a long day maybe at Lambeau Field, which is probably unique to most people. But you, you, you head back after a practice or after a game. I mean, is this uh, you see this as an outlet? You see this as a hobby? Do you see this as something? Hopefully, fifteen years or so down the road, when your NFL career is wrapped up, what you know? What does this mean to you? Um, I could see this 15 years down the line, you know, but, you know, after work, you know, I get in, get me some good food, do my studying, do my stretching. And, you know, if I find time, I'll make some music. Um, it's, it's, it's good, you know, because uh, music is very expressive. You know, if you're having a good day, sad day, you know, you're angry, you can express that in music, which is kind of cool. Um, so it's just a, it's a cool outlet to have outside of football. For sure. And I'm, not going to speak for you, but I'm guessing that, especially this past season, and with everything during COVID, having that outlet off the field was really important, keeping your focus and not going crazy. Mm -hmm. um, shifting a little bit, you said you're kind of a big city kid. Did I hear that right? Um, what's yeah. maybe I didn't hear that right? Yeah. What are your what was it like in Green Bay? I mean, it's a different town. You said you didn't expect to end up in Green Bay, smallest smallest city. And I say city lightly <laughs> uh, in the NFL. But um, what what's your impression of Green Bay, and and how have you, um, you know, uh, what are some things that uh, that you tried to take away in, in your time and living there? Um, so uh, being in Blacksburg, you know, it's pretty much just like a college town. Um, so I'm I'm kind of used to it coming to Green Bay. Um, as far as the city, I mean, the city only like treated me so well, man. I mean, I love the people there. Um, you know, Wisconsin is really an interesting state because outside of Milwaukee and like Green Bay, there's not really too much of like city life. Um, but you know, as far as, you know, playing football there, it's like an amazing place to be. Um, like, yeah, it's, I, I, I personally like, I like Green Bay a lot um, in the sense of, you know, it's not so much traffic how New York, New Jersey is but you can get in and out and stuff. And, you know, game day traffic actually is not bad at all from my understanding, I'm leaving for games, so. Have, think, have you gotten stuck behind any tractors while in Green Bay? That's generally the traffic we run into. Some uh, some tractors on the county roads, you know, uh, some farmers, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Probably like once or twice, you know, on like a snow day or if like someone's like, you know, putting some dirt somewhere. So yeah, probably like once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you been to Madison at all? You mentioned Milwaukee and Green Bay. I haven't, I haven't been to Madison. It, it's just been Appleton, Green Bay, um, Oshkosh, and Milwaukee. Cool. You like Madison. It's a college town. You know, that's that's where I live. It's it's pretty cool. Okay. That's awesome. That's where the University of Wisconsin is. Yes, sir. Awesome. Probably... The real question I have is on the snow days, do you have to go shovel your own snow or is someone taking care okay, of that? So I live I live in the metro apartments. Uh, metro apartment complex is like literally in downtown Green Bay. And, <laughs> sorry. Um, and um, no, I don't have to shovel my snow. I mean, the apartment complex take care of that. I don't have like a house or anything. So, but um, I think sooner or later I'm, I might have to start shoveling <laughs> sometime. I was gonna say if you just put a sign out that said Packer player lives here, it would be probably shoveled for you every time. You wouldn't have to worry about that. So, um. uh. <laughs> listen, I, I want to be mindful of time. We've got a, a couple minutes here. I, I do want to know: Are there any guys on the team that you you admire? Any guys? I mean, you're a younger guy in the league. It's an interesting locker room, right? There's there's a mix of uh, young guys, but there's also a ton of vets on their roster. So, um, you know, do you have any interactions? Are there guys that you watch, maybe at the position group, maybe not, that just kind of show you how to be a professional? Mm -hmm. um, I would say pretty much, I admire a lot, well, 
a lot of or all of my teammates, honestly, they have like something about them, you know, that actually, you know, it's the reason why they're here. So, um, you know, Aaron, Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Basiari, learned a lot from them. Um, pretty much everyone, honestly. I can name everybody, but it's fun though because you know we we also we joke a lot and we have a good time while we're at work. But you know, when it comes to work, you know, we believe in each other. We're there for one another, and we can count on each other. We're accountable for one another, which we, which anybody would want playing in the locker room like the Green Bay Packers. So it's um, awesome being around those guys every day, honestly. Well, yeah. and Yash, clearly the Packers coaching staff and front office likes what you've been doing. You come in as an undrafted free agent. Um, you've been able to make your way onto the active roster, uh, and now you're heading into year three. Uh, there's not a lot of guys that stick with the same team uh, as an undrafted free agent through the early part of their career. So, uh, you know, kudos to you, and, and I'd say, you know, best of luck to everything that you've got going on uh, this offseason and as you make a push to, to really establish even a, a larger role for yourself this season. Thank you. So, you know, wrapping up, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to chat again. We'll see you at camp. We'll be at camp a bunch, I'm sure. But we always like to finish our podcast the same way. Can you give us a Go Pack Go? Just go, Pat, go. <laughs> go, Pat, go. <laughs> Thanks, Yash. Appreciate Thank you, Yash. Of course. Yeah. Appreciate it. Better. 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 Better.